Hi, welcome to Station 71. I'm Firefighter McCabe. And this is Firefighter Bowen. We're going to give you a, a tour of, of the fire truck here at, at Station 71. This is where the operator, driver operator sits. Uh, he gets us to the call in a safe and efficient manner. There's numerous buttons and switches that he has control of to activate the warning lights. Um, and we also have radios and any, anything else we need for communication in there. As we work around, we'll take a look in the back seat real quick. Um, there's three seats in the back. Um, typically, we just have three firefighters on, on staff, um, but we have all our, all our equipment um, that we need to access along with air packs and uh, any other electronics. Noah is up there on the, the pump panel. And what he does as the driver operator is he controls with these levers the valves that give us water uh, so we can put it on the fire. He also has a uh, deck gun up on top that can shoot a lot of volume of water uh, a very far distance. So each one of these levers uh, controls a, a different valve out of a, either an intake or a discharge and that allows us to, to flow water through hoses. So those valves uh, will control these. This is an intake, these are discharges and there's multiple intakes and discharges around the, the fire truck. This is the engineer's compartment. It has all the appliances that we need to be able to supply water to hoses. Moving along, we have a uh, high elevation hose pack. So any building, if you think of the parking garage at Cadillac, they have stand pipes. We would use this hose and actually take it up there uh, so we don't have to, we can't get our fire truck up there, so we would need to take this up. This is our tools for uh, getting a patient out of a vehicle that's been in a wreck or has any type of damage. These are the spreaders. They, they look like giant scissors, um, but as you can see at the tip here, uh, it has extreme spreading force, uh, so we are able to, to pull metal apart or push metal apart, and we could also pull with that. If we need to crimp something to be able to, to bend the, the top of a car back, we can use it with that too. The other tools you see here, we have a, a ram and then also cutters. So these cutters can, can also cut metal to assist us in getting a patient out of a vehicle. In the back we have cribbing and we'll use this to stabilize vehicles uh, or any other piece of equipment uh, if we need to work safely around it. And then this is the hydrant bag. The person sitting in the back seat will get out and, and take a hydrant, hook up to the hydrant, and that has all their tools to do that. Up top, you can see all the hoses that we have in the hose bed, um, from our large diameter hose uh, to our two and a half inch, and then our, our attack lines. This is a nozzle that we can take um, away from the engine further, but it acts almost in the same fashion as the the deck gun where it can move a lot of water a lot, uh, across a long distance. So in this compartment we have uh, more tools that uh, assist us to do our job. We have positive uh, pressure ventilation fans which help us clear smoke out of a, a room or a building so uh, we can get cleaner air and invisibility and then those, those toxins decrease. We have an electric version of that fan and then we also have a gas power that, that can run a, uh, move a little more air and, and run a little longer. We have a chainsaw to use to, to vent a house um, for vertical ventilation, uh, cutting a hole in the roof or on the gable ends. Uh, and we can also use this in any other function that we, we need a, a cutting saw. It has a, a very sharp um, blade on it and so it's a, a very handy tool for us. Over here we have our hand tools. These are the, the tools that, that take no gasoline. It's just person power to, to operate these. Um, these are called the irons. Um, they assist us in opening doors um, through forcible entry. Uh, it's kind of a, a multi-tool uh, that we have at our disposal. 
Uh, behind here, as this door comes open, uh, we have a couple more tools. Uh, we have the bolt cutters to help us get through chains, locks, fences. Uh, and then we have a piercing nozzle. And what we could do with that piercing nozzle is drive it into a, a room or an attic space, uh, hook a hose up to it and water will come out this end. And that does a couple things. It lets us get into a difficult access place. And then it also keeps firefighters out of a harmful environment. So it is a functional tool that, that we uh, often use. In this compartment, we have uh, fire extinguishers for different types of burning material. And then we have this silver one is, is compressed water in the can. And that can be very functional in, in a, a room that has fire in it. It doesn't take a, too much water to, to cool that environment. Uh, so this is very handy if we're, we're going into the room uh, and we need to get it done in a, a quick fashion, uh, we can use the water can instead of hauling the hose through there. Right here we have uh, lights because uh, we have, have to do our job at night too. And we're not always uh, next to a street light or close to the engine where we can use the lights off the engine. So these are portable battery operated lights uh, that we can take to the scene of the accident uh, and uh, apply the lighting that, that's necessary to, to help us do our job. Thanks for setting that up, Noah. Uh, we will use this ladder rack. This ladder rack does come down uh, and we're able to access the ladders to, to get to roofs, to get to second story buildings. This is a hose reel. Uh, it's a, an inch hose that uh, we can take and, and use in rapid fashion uh, for a wildland fire or uh, maybe a car fire that's pretty small. We can deploy this and since it's on that reel, we can take it out and, and, and reel it up in a quick fashion. It moves water, not as much water as the other hoses, but it, it's still functional in, in its own way. So when we get dispatched to a, a structure fire, we have a lot of gear that we need to put on and able to keep us safe. Uh, so Noah here is going to put on each one of our pieces of equipment and, and we'll identify and talk about those. And we get calls throughout all uh, times of day. So it, we could be doing this waking up, just getting out of bed. So these are his pants he's putting on and they're not fireproof, but they're fire resistive. They'll keep us protected from radiant heat while we're in the fire. Next, he's going to put on his hood. And what the hood does is it protects our neck uh, from that radiant heat within the fire. Because we want full coverage uh, and no skin showing uh, when you're inside a, a structure fire. The jacket is the same material as the pants. And so we're, we're still working towards that goal of, of getting full protection. And then our, our hard hat with our shroud to, uh, to protect our head and our neck as well. So when we're responding to a fire, this is one of the seats that we sit in. And as you can see, that seat has a pack built into uh, the center of it. And Noah is, is currently putting on his pack uh, his air pack while we're responding. So once we get on scene, he'll get direction from the commanding officer. Uh, it may sound like Noah take tools to the, the door and I'll meet you there. And so he'll come out of the, the truck. That pack just, just pulls out. He'll exit. He'll grab the, the piece of equipment that he was instructed to grab, which in this case, this is the irons. And now we're going to simulate him going to the, the front door. And that's where he'll get down and, and mask up uh, to get that full protection. So he puts his mask on, he pulls the straps to make sure it's tight. And then he checks his seal to, that's what he did with his hands right there. He checked his seal to, to make sure that no outside air was getting into the, to his mask. He's turning his air bottle on. And then that's the activation of the pass device, which tells you your air, tell you, give you a low air alarm, 
And then if uh, you uh, stop moving or you get trapped and that uh, it has a motion device in there that it will start beeping um, to help identify where you are. So he put his regulator on. Now he's breathing air out of that air bottle, uh, out of the air pack. And then the, the final steps, he'll put his gloves on. So now he has full coverage and full protection. There's not any skin showing. He's got uh, breathable air coming from the air pack. And so now he's ready to, to go inside a, a structure fire of, of any uh, type. So thanks for joining us on the, the virtual tour. Hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot. Stay safe this summer. And if you have any questions, please visit the website below. And from me and Noah, thanks for joining us.